welcome to tonight's 4A Narrows League High School football contest here at Joe Knowles Stadium as the South Kitsap Wolves host the Olympic Trojans. The Wolves enter tonight's game with a record of 3-1 with a 2-1 record in Narrows League play and the Olympic Trojans are 2-2 overall with a 1-2 record in Narrows League play as well and uh, I am Darren Bowden and joining me in the booth tonight is a huge South Kitsap sports fan extraordinaire, Mr. Phil Wilson. And Phil, what kind of a game should we expect this evening? Well, I expect to see both te both teams running the ball this game. And uh, Olympic having Jarrell Nelson. He's uh, what is he? He's about five foot nine, hundred and forty pounds. He can really run the ball, and he's a fast, quick guy. But that's no match for uh, Ryan Cole, number thirty-four, the uh, the really offensive star for South Kitsap. Well, the Wolves uh, will be trying to avenge a heartbreaking loss last week at the hands of the Central Kitsap Cougars uh, with a defeat of 21 to 13. But uh, the Wolves have been bitten by the injury bug a little bit here, losing a couple of key players uh, on offense, a big lineman, uh, number 75, a senior, Chris Kruger, standing at 6'3", 275. And on the defensive side, number 58, Buddy Anderson, uh, Kruger suffering a shoulder injury, will be out for a couple of games, and Buddy Anderson out with a knee injury, and uh, the Wolves already were uh, devastated by the loss of a 6'3", 188-pound junior, number 31, Cody McCulley, so uh, they have a few injuries here, but the Wolves are going to hope to try and bounce back from this and come up with some key players to fill in those holes here as they will be playing a very respectable Olympic Trojan football team. Yes, and uh, both of those players that you that uh, well actually uh, there's a couple more, but both of those players that you mentioned really help uh, help Cole out get get his yards, and they really uh, they're two of the biggest players on the South Kitsap uh, O line, and they really uh, they really help him out getting some yards. Well, the Wolves have uh, been tested every game this year, and uh, I just think that the competition is, is just so much better than what the people normally expect uh, for many of the football teams. And uh, they had a wonderful win in the first game of the season, defeating the Snohomish Panthers, a very tough and traditional football team. And uh, then they also got a couple of more wins against the Gig Harbor Tides and the Bremerton Knights, but uh, suffered a loss against the Central Kitsap Cougars, uh, a huge, a huge, huge win uh, for Central Kitsap. But uh, hopefully they'll be able to bounce back here tonight and uh, show us some of that powerful football game as the South Kitsap Wolves come running out onto the field here, led by number 34, Ryan Cole. And Phil, Ryan is having one heck of a season so far. And after four games, uh, he has a grand total of 886 yards on the ground almost averaging 10 yards a carry and scoring nine touchdowns. So Cole has picked up right where he left off from last season and is really running the ball for a lot of yards. Yes, he is. He's really awesome. And I'd like to think, talk about that Central Kitsap game. The, uh, the uh, SCK really focused on Cole the last game, and he, uh, he got a few less yards than he should have, and they really focused on stopping betters too. When uh, he, he threw for one, one completion and three interceptions, I really want to see South Kitsap throw the ball in this game against this weaker uh, Olympic high school team. And they have a record of uh, two and seven last year. So I think they uh, defeated Olympic last year. So uh, let's see him do it this time. Well, I'll tell you, Cole has been doing a nice job carrying the ball, but uh, a lot of credit has to go to the South Kitsap offensive line who has helped create many holes for him to get open. And as the, uh, the team captains uh, meet out at midfield uh, for the Wolves uh, is Ryan Cole, uh, number 66, Phil Estevez, number 11, Travis Fetters, and number 21, Joel Goodwin, all seniors on this football team as uh, it looks as if the Wolves uh, have won the coin toss, and it looks like they are going to, we'll have to wait and see here. Looks like they are going to defer, and uh, the Trojans will be receiving the kickoff, which means that the Wolves will get the ball back, uh, the opening kickoff in the second half. But uh, uh, back to some of these statistics, Phil. Uh, Cole has been doing a nice job, but uh, uh, the nice thing about all this teamwork is that there are other players who can step in and uh, help out. This team unity thing is, is pretty big here at South Kitsap. 
as uh, number 11, a senior quarterback, Travis Vetters, has been doing an excellent job throwing the ball this year, uh, completing 19 of 41 passes for 358 yards but uh, and six touchdowns. As uh, we are getting ready here for the South Kitsap Band to play the national anthem, and the colors will be presented by the South Kitsap's NJROTC Color Guard. That was the South Kitsap High School Marching Band with the playing of the National Anthem and the South Kitsap NJROTC Color Guard presenting the colors here tonight as uh, the Trojans come out to receive the kickoff from the Wolves. Back deep to receive for the Olympic Trojans Number 34, a 5'8", 150 pound junior, Chris Hunt. And number two, Martin Gratz, a 6'2", 155 pound junior. So uh, the Wolves are uh, lining up here in formation as number 91, Shannon Haney, a 6'1", 178 pound uh, tight end and linebacker will also be doing the kicking. So we're getting ready here for the kickoff at Joel Knowles Stadium. Let's play as, some football. As the band get the chance going, and there goes the kick, and it's a squib down the middle, and it's taken by number 22. There's no number for him on the in the list here, but uh, the Trojans don't get very much uh, with a line drive kick. Actually, I think that was number 32, Zach Curry, 
and the ball will be placed at the 35 yard line where the Trojans will take over first and 10. Well, we'll see how the Wolves do here on defense, a little banged up and some injuries uh, keeping key players out, but uh, we'll see what the Wolves do here as the Trojans break the huddle and uh, we have number 17, Will Gratz at quarterback and number 21, Jarrell Nelson as the tailback and he goes in motion. They hand the, they, they hand the ball off to Nelson. Uh, and actually, they fake the ball to Nelson. They hand the ball straight up the middle to number 30, Steve Dillon, but he doesn't get very much on the play, maybe a yard and we'll call it second and nine. So uh, right off the bat, the Trojans with a, a few fakes here and there to try to throw the Wolves off on defense. Yeah, Olympic tried to go straight up the middle there and it didn't look like they had anything. The Wolves break the huddle with a multi-set offense, two backs. They hand the ball off up the middle to Nelson, but he is going nowhere. A nice defensive stop there by the Wolves. In fact, uh, he might have only gained another couple of yards. Actually, there will be a loss on the play. A, a loss of two yards. It'll be three yards. We'll call it third down and 12 from the 33-yard line. So, so far right now, the Trojans are not going anywhere on offense. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Olympics trying to trying to take advantage of that injury situation for South Kitsap and finding out that we do have a pretty deep team and, and uh, have got it straightened out on that D-line. Gratz takes the snap, rolls out to his left, looks deep, he's got a man open. He throws a floater up in the air though, and oh, it is caught. A nice catch. By number two for Olympic Trojans, Martin Gratz. That's Martin Gratz. So Gratz hooks up with Gratz for a huge play, a gain of about 20 and uh, it will be a first down for the Trojans. That was, that ball was up there for a pretty long time. I think there was a penalty flag on the play, but it looks like it was going to be pass interference against South Kitsap. The officials are conferencing it in the middle of the field. Uh, actually, it was a personal foul, so I didn't quite see that one as uh, one of the side judges comes over to explain it to Coach Sigurdsson as to what happened there, but uh, that's a 15 yard, so tack another 15 yards onto that play, so about a 35 yard gain by the Trojans, and the Trojans are now into Wolf territory at the Wolf at the South Kitsap 30. Gratz hands the ball off to Gratz, and he gets the ball and tries to take it over the right side, but he's met by number 66, Phil Estevez. And Matt Christenberry, and it uh, looks like, actually that was uh, Jarrell Nelson, and uh, one of their star running backs, and he is down, and he looks like he's in a little bit of pain. Nelson with a couple of carries early on, uh, not for very many yards, but uh, he gets a carry on that, and he gets about two yards on the play, but uh, it looks like they might be examining his knee, so uh, we hope that everything will be okay here. And Nelson being one of Olympics Star featured running back. It's 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 kind of hard to see this right ha happening right now. He was a uh, he's a junior. What is he? He's five nine, 140 pounds, and he's a he's a quick he's a quick guy. He showed last year as a sophomore that he could he could he could handle the the first spot for the running back for Olympic. But uh, this is tough to see. Well, he's not really big in size, but uh, that quickness of his and speed he utilizes to its height and uh, he's sort of a tough runner to take down as uh, the athletic trainers for the Trojans are going to help him off the field. And uh, we hope that young man is okay. And uh, let's see, let's go down to the sideline for a report here. Do you wanna be? Because we need somebody. Huh? We need somebody. Okay. Okay. okay, so how do you think this game's going so far? Well? 
feeling pretty good. Can't tell, it's only two minutes into the game, but South's the best, so we'll win. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Never mind, it looked like it was working just Well, there's fine. the pitch out to number 36 for the Trojans, Robert Hodge, a junior, and he gets a little bit of running room for a gain of about four yards down to the South Kitsap, we'll call it the South Kitsap 23, where it'll be third down and three yards, three, uh, third down and four yards to go for a first down. Big test right here for this Olympic offense. So the Wolves hoping for a stop here as they come out with two backs in the backfield, a man in motion right, they fake the pitch, hand the ball straight up the middle, and Steve Dillon gets the carry straight up the middle and he will have the first down. A nice gain of four yards on the play to the 19 first and 10 Olympic. The Trojans doing a nice job here of ball control and with a huge penalty, a, a nice 20 yard pass play and then tack on to that a 15 yard personal foul against the Wolves and the Trojans are on the move. Gratz hands the ball straight up the middle. There goes Dylan. He's tripped up at about the two yard line. A 15 yard run by Steve Dillon down to the South Kitsap two. First and goal for the Trojans. And with all these fake handoffs, I, gosh, they had me confused. I didn't know what, he, he went right up the middle and Gosh, he actually had the South Kitsap defense confused a little bit too. So the Trojans looking to get into the end zone early here in this contest. They hand the ball off to Dillon and he barrels his way over the goal line for a touchdown, touchdown Olympic. And uh, Olympic showing they have the depth to, to get the job done. Number 30, Steve Dillon getting the touchdown. So Jarrell Nelson goes out with a, a minor knee injury, but Steve Dillon comes in, a 5'9", 170-pound senior, and he gets into the end zone from two yards out. The Trojans with the kick, number 13, Justin Wisdom. And it is no good, so 6 nothing here early on in the first quarter with eight minutes and 36 seconds to go. So the Trojans do a nice job of ball control, running the ball on most of the plays, and uh, the Trojans go ahead here seven to nothing, or excuse me, six to nothing uh, early in the contest. So not a very good defensive stand for the Wolves, but uh, we'll see what their high-powered offense can do uh, as they are going to send Ryan Cole and Victor Valle back to receive the kickoff. And if you're the Olympic Trojans, you're going to want to do everything in your power to try and keep that ball away from either of those runners, Phil. And we know that uh, how good that Ryan Cole is, but uh, let us remind everybody about the excellent job of number 24, Victor Valle, a junior, uh, who does a nice job when he comes in and catch, carries the ball. Yes, definitely. And uh, Cole gets his, gets his rest worth, and uh, he doesn't ever have to come in early because Valle gets the job done when he needs to... Uh get in there and uh, Cole needs to get a rest in. So the Trojans are the first to get into the end zone and on the scoreboard and we'll see what uh, Justin Wisdom can do here as the Wolves get set to receive the kickoff. And it is a line drive kick down the middle fielded by Victor Valle at the 17 yard line, he stays on his feet. Victor, he tripped up a little bit. Oh, and he was just one step away from breaking it into the open. Nice return by Victor Valle down to the South Kitsap 48. Yes, definitely. It looked like Olympic right there taking the ball up the middle. Valle with the, with the confidence just to take it right up the middle. He didn't go outside at all. And he had some good blocks on that play by uh, South Kitsap special teams. Valle fielded the ball at the 17 and made a nice 25 yard pick up there as uh, the Wolves come out in their power eye formation. Travis Fetters with the quick three step drop and he's got a man in a nice pass play. Complete. Nice pass play, he didn't even, he didn't even look to see whether his receiver was open. He knew he was gonna be open. That was number 25, Tyler Mayfield. I'm sorry about the hesitation there. 
A nice nine yard pickup there. Vetters to Mayfield. So the Wolves come out throwing. As Mayfield splits right, Nick Anderson left. Cole is the tailback. They hand the ball off to Cole, and he is met. Oh, he's hit hard at the line of scrimmage by the Olympic Trojans defense. Number 62, Kevin Dick. Cole is able to get over the line of scrimmage though for a nice first down play here. So the first running play to Ryan Cole and he gets the first down. Vetters looks over the defense. Oh, and if there's going to be motion on the left side, that's gonna be uh, illegal motion on the tight end number 19, Josh Meeker. So we're gonna scoot the Wolves back here five yards. So a couple of penalties here early on in the game for the Wolves. And the ball will be placed at the Olympic 46 yard line. Mayfield split right. Thomas and Cole in the backfield. They hand the ball off to Cole. He's got a big hole. There goes Ryan Cole. He high steps over a few Trojans, and he's still on his feet, dragging some people down. But I think there's a fumble on the play, and there he is. Can you believe it? I didn't see the ball pop out, but it did. Cole high stepped over a couple of Trojan defenders, and uh, the ball popped out loose, and the Trojans have recovered it. So. A couple of penalties and an early turnover, and the Trojans get the ball right back. Yeah, Cole barreling right through that hole. He was met by a few uh, Olympic uh, defensive backs, and just uh, one of them hit him hard enough to pop the ball out, and uh, South Kitsap couldn't recover. So the Trojans have the ball at their own 13-yard line. They hand the ball off to the right side. And they, he is swarmed by a pack of wolves, and he's taken down just outside the 15. Nice defensive stop there by South Kitsap. That's Zach Curry on the carry. Curry stop by Chris Anderson and Bill Aceves. And three, it's second to seven. So the Trojans get a gain of about three yards on the play. Gratz looks over, hands the ball off to the left-hand side, but number 36, Robert Hodge is going nowhere as the Wolves are right there to stop him. And in fact, it's going to be a, a loss on the play. Looks like he, he will be taken back to the original line of scrimmage where it'll be third and 10 for Olympic. And uh, remember the last third down Olympic play, they busted it right up the gut here. Let's see uh, South Kitsap really put the stop to Olympic here. Chris Lambert sprit, split to the left, goes in motion right. Gratz fakes, he's under pressure. He looks down the middle, he's got a man open, but the pass is incomplete. He had Lambert in the middle, but he overthrew him just a bit as Gratz rolled out to his right, incomplete. It'll be fourth and 10 for the Olympic Trojans. So the Trojans get the ball on a turnover, but deep in their own territory, and they're unable to capitalize on a South Kitsap mistake as the Wolves send back two men to receive the punt. You could thank number 45, John Embaum, for hurrying at uh, QB. Oh, the ball snapped over the head of the punter, number 15, Jeff Shaw, and that will be a safety. The ball was snapped back and it went right through his fingertips and he looked like he did the smart thing and just tried to fall on it and he did. So the Wolves get two points here on the safety as uh, the ball was snapped over his head and uh, that also means that the, the Trojans will be kicking the ball back to the Wolves. So uh, a little twist here on the side of the Olympic Trojans. That, that makes it, uh, yeah, six to two with uh, five minutes and 30, 
32 seconds remaining in the first quarter. So we'll see what the Wolves can do as they will be getting the ball back. And uh, like you said here, we've got a, a first quarter score, or actually it's almost like a first inning score as uh, Olympic leads six to two here in the bottom of the first inning. It's almost like a Mariners game going on here. Except I don't know if you'll be seeing Edgar Martinez uh, putting on a, a football uniform here tonight. I hope not. So the Trojans will be kicking the ball away from their own 20 yard line. Valle and Cole back to receive the kick. And kicking number 13, Mr. Wisdom. So Wisdom squibs the kick, it's high and to the right. The Wolves touch the ball and they just do the right thing and fall on it just past midfield where the Wolves will take over first and 10. That's a smart play right there by uh, number 63, Anthony Aguirre, but uh, man, I thought he almost didn't have it there. So a 28 yard kick and the Wolves will take over here on offense as they break their sideline huddle and come out ready to go. DB has uh, the first play on the first down. Do you expect him to throw? Uh, I'm kind of looking for a running play here. And they do, they hand the ball straight up to Phil Thomas. He bounces off a couple of runners and makes his way straight up the field. Gets down to the 48 yard line. Excuse me, we'll call that the 43 yard line where it will be second and six for South Kitsap. The Wolves send two receivers to the right, Anderson and Mayfield. Fetters hands the ball off to Cole, but oh boy, he's met there by a bunch of Trojans and they went nowhere. A good defensive stop there, good discipline as Olympic, the defensive lineman stayed home and they were ready for Ryan Cole they stopped him, and in fact, it's going to be a loss of about one on the play. It'll be third and seven, South Kitsap. Mayfield checks with the official on the sideline. Betters rolls off to his right. He's got a man open, and he overthrows his intended receiver, number 19, Josh Meeker. So the Wolves get the ball back after a safety and they go four and out or three and out where they will be punting the ball back to Olympic. But when Olympic gets the ball, they should be deep in their own territory. So early on, the, the coaches from South Kitsap can't be very happy with the way that the offense is, has been performing here so far early in this game. Yes, and this South Kitsap Wolves team is a, has a very powerful offense and we haven't seen it here yet tonight. Back to receive Chris Hunt for Olympic. As they fake the punt, there goes Ryan Cole. He steps onto the inside. He's got one man to take him down, but it's gonna take two. Cause Ryan Cole gets down to about the 11 yard line as the Wolves have a fake punt. Travis Fetters faked as if the ball went sailing over his head. They hike the ball right to Ryan Cole. He gets a nice gain down to the 12-yard line. First down for the South Kitsap Wolves. What a nice and exciting play. I didn't expect to see that from the South Kitsap Wolves. Coach is taking a chance on a fake punt, giving it to Ryan Cole and letting him do his thing. They get the first down at around the 11 or 12, it looks. Cole got the ball and had a huge hole on the left side, and he turned it into a nice gain. So the Wolves in the power eye formation, they end the ball up to Ryan Cole and a couple of missed blocks there, but the Trojans are right there to meet him. And they take him down. They take him down here. Let's look at that replay. So the Wolves, hopefully, the Wolves are looking to get that ball into the end zone here. Well, there's and a replay, there he is. Takes two Olympic players to take him down as you see Cole finishing up on that uh, fake punt. We have uh, number 13, Chris Anderson also in the game here. They hand the ball off to Cole. He gets out to the left side. There goes Ryan Cole, and he's gonna get into the end zone for a touchdown! Touchdown, Ryan Cole! Touchdown, South Kitsap! 
So just like that, the South Kitsap Wolves hand the ball off to Ryan Cole, and what does he do best? He runs with it and gets into the end zone. And Cole being a featured talented back on this team, showing his great speed. Gosh, he's, he's amazing to watch and uh, just takes the ball outside, acts so nonchalantly, just uh, stiffs arm one guy and, you know, kind of barrels through another and gets the touchdown. And credit number 69, Ben Duncan, and 71, Chase Decker on the left side of that offense for creating a nice hole for Cole to make it up and get into that end zone as the Wolves attempt an extra point as uh, Shannon Haney, the left-footed kicker, uh, attempts the extra point and it is no good. So uh, we're continuing this baseball theme here as the South Kitsap Wolves go ahead of the Olympic Trojans eight to six. Early on in this game, we're seeing a little bit of ball control. The defensive side for both teams has been doing a pretty good job, especially by both lines staying at home, making sure that that ball does not advance. The Trojans got on the board first with a two yard touchdown run by Steve Dillon. The Wolves came back, fumbled the ball, but Olympic could not do anything with it on four possessions. South Kitsap gets the ball back and after a fake punt, they're able to punch the ball into the end zone. A 13 yard touchdown run by number 34, Ryan Cole. So the Wolves will be kicking off to the Trojans. Hodge and Hunt back to receive, but Haney kicks the ball out of bounds. And in high school football, that means that when a ball is kicked out of bounds on the kickoff, the ball will be automatically placed at the 35 yard line. So instead of hoping to get the Trojans deep into their own territory, they will start with nice field position here. Yeah, that's a, that's a best friend to the, uh, to the special teams right there is a kicker who kicks the ball out of bounds. They don't have to do anything, just stand back and watch it go out of bounds. So with 3.04 remaining, the Wolves lead the Trojans eight to six as Olympic breaks the huddle here. Chris Lambert splits right and looks like a wishbone formation as Gratz drops back. He's got a man in the middle and he's rushed and he has to hurry his throw. And because he had to hurry his throw, number 45 pressured him, John Enbaum, and he hurried it and the pass was incomplete. That's the second time we've talked about Enbaum hurrying the quarterback. He's getting the, I don't know whether he's doing, he's taking advantage of uh, of his line and he's really getting through there. Will Gratz dropped back but didn't have any time to set up as Enbaum was rushing right at him and pressured him into dumping that ball off sooner than expected. Incomplete, it'll be second and 10 for Olympic as they send wide receivers to both sides of the field. Gratz drops back again, he's got a man open in the middle, bobbles it, but it is incomplete. The pass was intended for number 40, Joel Ackley, but he bobbled it right in the middle as a South Kitsap defender was right there with him. Another incomplete pass, it'll be third and 10. So two passing plays and the Trojans have been unable to connect as they send Two wide receivers left, a quick snap. Gratz looks to his left. He's got a man open on the sideline. Oh, and he was wide open and he overthrew him. Lambert was wide open and looked like there was blown coverage on the defense there. And Gratz just let him too far, incomplete. Yeah, coming out with this multi-set offense, they can, they can use any kind of set they want. And this time they chose a shotgun, setting up two wide receivers out, outside and uh, really fooled the South Kitsap defense. Didn't have time to audible. So Gratz rolled to his left, had all the time in the world, and Lambert was wide open, but it was incomplete. As Olympic punts the ball, it'll be fielded by number 33. Oh, a nice run there, number 33. Richard Fine. Richard Fine, a sophomore, 
who comes in to field the punt, and uh, the Wolves will take over just past midfield. We'll call it the 49-yard line. So a nice defensive stop there by the Wolves. Three straight incomplete passes, and the Wolves get the ball back here on offense with 2.37 remaining in the first quarter. Little confusion down there as the Wolves send out two receivers. There's a flag down. The pass was intended for Richard Fine, but I don't think that this play was ever off legally. A lot of flags came out quick, and usually that's an indication of, an, of a false start on the offense. He indicated that it was an illegal lineman downfield, but I'm not sure about that one. I didn't see. At least I think that's what the indication was. Well, they're sending him back. Boy, they're sending him back 10 more yards. So instead of a first and 10, it's going to be second and 25. That's with a 15 yard penalty. They pitched the ball out to Cole. He's got a little bit of running room, stays on his feet. Jukes a little bit, he gets out to the right side. He's got one man to take him down. He does, but not until Ryan Cole gets about 30 yards back on the play. He takes it past midfield near the 40 yard line. So just like that, a penalty erased. Cole gets it all back. Yeah. Nice first down run by Ryan Cole. Actually, he was close to the first down. Oh. Looked like he inched his way forward a little bit, but he gained most of it back. It'll be second and three for the Wolves. Fetters fakes the handoff, rolls to his left. He's got a lot of time. He's got a man over Josh Meeker. Meeker makes the catch. He takes a couple of hits, and he's taken down near the 10. Oh, me, uh, who was, yeah, Olympic. Olympic showing blitz. Fetters take advantage of it. Decides to throw the ball outside, gets uh, Meeker wide open, and uh, Meeker gets it done. That was a great ball fake by Travis Fetters, rolling to his left, and he had number 19, Josh Meeker, my man Meek. He was wide open, made a nice catch, and inches his way down to the 10. It'll be first and 10 for the Wolves. A few good uh, series of plays right here by South Kitsap. Let's see if they can keep their momentum going. Actually, the ball will be at about the 11-yard line, so they can still get a first down. But better than that, they're going to get the ball to Ryan Cole, and he's going to get to the end zone. How do you like that? They're not looking for a first down. They're looking for a touchdown. And that's exactly what Ryan Cole gives them, an 11-yard touchdown run, his second of the night. Touchdown, South Kitsap. 11-yard run, 11 yards, uh, 11 touchdowns this year by Ryan Cole. This now, South Kitsap. Offense getting a job, getting getting the job done, I'm sorry. And credit number 55, Matt Christenberry, and number 57, Phil Bilderback, for creating a nice hole there. He was able to cut back to his right and go straight up the middle, and a touchdown for the Wolves. It's like they're they going, for, going two. for a two point conversion here. They hand the ball off to Cole. But I don't know if he's going to make it. I haven't seen a signal yet from the officials. And no, it is no good. So the running attempt here on the extra point is no good. But the Wolves get on the board again. An 11-yard touchdown run by Ryan Cole. And I think we got the replay here. A nice, oh, look at that hole right there. Cole's able to get there, and those guys aren't going to take him down, I'll tell you that. No, so a nice job by the offensive line to cave the defense all the way to the left. No, uh, Cole just twisting and barreling through that uh, South, or, uh, Olympic secondary, getting the touchdown, 11th of the season, remember. He had, uh, what was it, 25 last year, DB? He had again, a lot, I'll tell you he that. He had a lot. He set a Narrows League record for uh, touchdowns last year. Well, he came into the game with nine touchdowns and add two more to that. So again, the Wolves going to their strength, the running game, and Ryan Cole gets into the end zone 
from 11 yards out. And it doesn't look like a baseball score anymore, does it, DB? 14 to 6 with 1 minute and 51 seconds to go on the first quarter. Now it's starting to look like a football score. As the Wolves get ready to kick the ball off here from the 40, Haney with a squib kick up the middle. It's fielded by number 32, Zach Curry, and he doesn't get very much as he's met by the South Kitsap defense, and they're going to take him down. But they're going to give him forward progress to about the 40-yard line where Olympic will take over first and 10. And you can tell that that Olympic player that recovered that kick uh, isn't used to recovering kicks. He, uh, he ducked right behind his... Uh, his blockers and uh, really didn't, didn't get much right there. So the Trojans will look to get a little bit of offense going here. As early on in the game, they did a nice job of controlling the ball, but uh, came out with some passing plays. And we'll have to see what kind of a job they do. They do a little confusion, a couple of handoffs here. And uh, the running back for Olympic stays on his feet, but he's not going to get very much. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. In fact, I don't think there was any gain on the play. No gain. We're going to call it second and 10 for Olympics. So the defense for South Kitsap barreling down. We have to have a chat with Ryan Cole about uh, and this offensive line about you know creating all these holes for these guys to score because they're making me lose my voice and get so excited up here. <laughs> as the Trojans come out with two wide receivers to the left. They hand the ball straight up the middle, and a nice tackle there, but not until the Trojans look like they're gonna get past the first down marker. Looks like number 38, Luke Schweitzer. Luke Switzer, he takes the handoff, and he gets a, an 11 yard gain for a first down for Olympic. An Olympic uh, showing what they can do by running the ball, they tried they tried passing the ball with uh, three and out, three uh, incompletions, and uh, they're uh, using their other option and running the ball. So the Trojans doing okay here. They hand the ball off to, they get the number right away. They get the run off the left side, not much on the gain. And it will be second down and eight yards to go for the Trojans. So the Trojans doing a little bit of ball control here, getting ready as uh, time is winding down here in the first quarter. Only 10 seconds, seeing if they can get the playoff. See if he makes it, if they do, they end the ball off to Switzer again. He doesn't get very much, and he's taken down at about the 45 yard line of South Kitsap, as that is the end of the first quarter. So the Wolves lead 14 to six, and uh, let's go down to Jessica on the sidelines. Are you gonna tell us if we're live? Are you gonna tell us if we're live? Are we live? Technical difficulty with Jessica. I don't know, DB, this looks like uh, one heck of a game here by South Kitsap. Well, it looks like we won't be able to get the sideline report, but uh, <clears throat> as soon as we get that technical difficulty thing worked out, uh, hopefully we'll be able to get back to Jessica on the sideline. So, uh, we're, the teams are going to change sides here. And the Wolves are ready on defense, and so are the Trojans. As Olympic will take over, it'll be third down and five yards to go for the first down. Gratz looks over the defense. Man goes in motion, they pitch the ball out to Hodge. Not much there. Not much room running there and he's gonna fall short of the first down as Phil Estevez and Chris Anderson and John Embaum Help make the stop there on third down. Nice defense by the Wolves. And uh, I don't know, uh, Olympic choosing to run the, do a running play. It looked like they could have faked this out more by stacking either side with receivers and then running the opposite way. They didn't choose to do that and uh, really uh, didn't get the job done there. So Fine and Cole back to receive the punt. 
but it's going to go out of bounds. Not, not a very good kick there as the Wolves will take over. And I think this time we're going to try and hit back down to the side. <laughs> Okay, here we're live down on the field with some fans at SK. Let's see how they're doing. Our defense looks pretty yeah. strong. <laughs> Our offense is awesome. They just need to keep running. Like Jenny says, run, run Cole, run! run. <laughs> Thank you, and back up to Phil. Thank you for that report, Jessica. As the Wolves come out here, just pass, uh, they hand the ball straight up the middle to Thomas, but he's not going very far. Might have got a couple on the gain. It'll be second down for the Wolves. Thomas with a quick handoff up the middle. He gains three on the play. We'll call it second and seven from the South Kitsap 30 yard line. I'd like to see Vetters throw the ball in this uh, set, of, uh, set of offensive plays here. Vetters looking for Mayfield on the right side. The catch is made, nice pass play, and a nice catch by Tyler Mayfield to keep his feet in bounds, and he gets to the Olympic 45. Yeah, good presence of mind by uh, 25 Tyler Mayfield, and uh, Vetter's really skies one, showing that he can do that, and, uh, and uh, it's a nice pass play by South Kitsap. So a nice 25 yard gain there, Vetter's to Mayfield where it'll be first and 10, they pitch the ball off to Cole. He's got a little bit of running room. He's gonna try and turn it up. He does. He's met by a couple of Olympic defenders. Cole gets about four yards on the game. It'll be, it'll be second down and six yards to go. So the Wolves doing a little bit of both running and passing. Mixing it up here in the first half as Mayfield splits right, Nick Anderson left. Cole and Thomas in the backfield. They hand the ball off to Cole. He skips and dances his way around. A nice gain by Ryan Cole. Well, that's not Cole, that's uh, number 24, that's number 24 Victor Valle. He's so fast I couldn't tell who he was. Yeah, it two looked like a three, didn't it? I just saw uh, Cole. Cole go to the sidelines for a breather after that uh, run up the gut. And who deserves to, to rest more than uh, Ryan Cole scoring all the points for South Kitsap? So Cole getting a breather here as the Wolves get a nice first down run by Victor Valle. Betters hands the ball off to Valle again, but he's met in the backfield and he may have made it back to the line of scrimmage. A nice defensive stop there by number 28, Chris Hartman for Olympic. So Valle taken down right away. Practically no gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10 for the Wolves as Valle comes out and Ryan Cole comes back into the game. Vetters hands the ball off to Cole. He takes it on a counter. Cole stays on his feet, skips, bounces out, and he gets out and he's gonna get into the end zone. Touchdown, Ryan Cole. Touchdown, South Kitsap. That's, uh, that's number 12 on the year for Ryan Cole, man. The guy had his legs. Oh, this is amazing to watch. The guy had his foot, and he just he kept on kept on making his feet move, move, move. He wouldn't stop going. The guy was like, come on, give up, and he didn't. He just kept going for the touchdown. Ryan Cole gets out to the right side of the field. And he gets into the end zone from 32 yards out, his third touchdown of the game. And the Wolves go up on the board, 20 to six. Haney comes out for the extra point. The kick is up and good. And I can't believe they didn't throw a penalty on that. Number 92, Pat Faulkner comes in and he just barreled over the kicker. I can't believe they didn't call anything on that. Usually that's unsportsmanlike. Let's check out this, this replay we got going on here. They end the ball, a nice block there by number 69, Ben Duncan, freeing Cole to get open. 
he gets out and look at him just blazed by everybody. Touchdown South Kitsap. So Ryan Cole doing a nice job early here in the game. Already with three touchdowns and the Wolves doing a good job on defense. And they have gone ahead with 8.59 to go in the first half over Olympic 21 to six. And with 8.59 to go in the half, you think Cole might set a record for touchdowns in a game if he keeps going at this pace. So Olympic is going to do what they can to try and figure out how to stop the Wolves and how to get their offense going again. The Trojans will be sending back number 34, Chris Hunt, and number 25, Andre Nelson. They will be back to do the receiving. We have a new kicker in, number five, Hiram Davis. Oh my, what a hit! Oh, what a collision! What a collision by number 81, Chris Kaipoff. Oh, I didn't see the number for that Olympic, the Olympic offensive player, but what a collision near the 30 yard line. They just bounced off each other, but uh, not much on the play as Olympic will have first and 10 at their own 30. Lambert split left. Grants hands the ball off in the backfield, but uh, the Wolves are quick to get there. And everybody getting in there. As uh, you see, first, first uh, wrapping them around the waist, number 45, John Enbaum. Ball carrier, number 42, Clyde Switzer. So smooth Clyde Switzer gets the carry, but uh, he's taken back for a loss. It's going to be second down and 12 yards to go for Olympic. So South Kitsap kind of getting into their groove here, doing a nice job, both sides of the ball. They come out in that wishbone formation. Gratz sends a man, they hand the ball off. He's got an opening up the middle. That's Zach Curry. He may have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage, but we'll have to see where the ball is placed. And not a lot, not a lot happening for this Olympic offense. See if they can, they can pull this third third uh, third down out with uh, throwing the ball maybe. So another short gain. It'll be third and ten for Olympic back at the original line of scrimmage. Lambert splits right. Looks like it'll be a passing formation. They're in the shotgun. Gratz rolls out to his right. He's got the tight end, but a nice defensive play there by number seven, Jeff Goodwin. The pass is incomplete. It'll be fourth and 10 for Olympic. Nice defense by Jeff Goodwin. And that pass would have been complete, but Goodwin hit him hard enough to make the ball pop out. And that's one thing that you can do if, if you can't if you can make a play on the ball, you just hit the guy hard enough and the ball pops out. That's one heck of a tough stop there by Jeff Goodwin. And I'll tell you why it was a tough stop, because that kid is tough. The reason why that kid is tough, because that boy's dad is tough. Elton Goodwin, a legendary baseball coach here at South Kitsap High School. So the kick, the punt, goes out around the 42, but there's a flag on the play. And they're going to call roughing the kicker on the play. And if that's the case, I think Olympic's going to get the ball here. So a huge penalty on South Kitsap. Well, they're going to replay the down, but the penalty running into the kicker. So the Wolves with a few penalties here. Five yards, but it's not enough to get the first down. But uh, they can't afford another one like this, or Olympic will get the ball on, on the turnover of downs. But they will punt again, sending and Ryan Cole and Nick Anderson back to receive a nice kick. It's going to be fielded by Nick Anderson. It goes through his fingers, but he's going to down the ball. Ends up being a nice kick. Down to the 15-yard line where the Wolves will take over first and 10. And I hate to sound cheesy right here, but uh, Mr. Wisdom doing a very smart thing in uh, 
and kicking the ball in into the field instead of out of bounds this time. It's, uh, he's done it twice, and this time he decided, hey, I'm going to kick the ball in so they can catch it. And uh, Anderson not catching the ball and uh, falling on it. So instead of having the ball at their own 42, the Wolves will have to take over at their own 15. They send Mayfield right, Anderson left, Thomas and Cole in the back. They pitch the ball out to the right side. A couple of nice blocks, but the Trojans swarm over to that side and they take Cole down. Gain of only a couple on the play. It'll be second down for the Wolves. Call it a gain of two, and the Wolves will have the ball at the 17. Vatters looks over the defense. And we have a substitution, Jared Stevenson, in for Travis Vatters, number 17. And with that substitution, looks like the Wolves took too much time off the clock. And I believe this is going to be a delay of game. Nope, it's an illegal, an illegal procedure call, so another penalty. Scoot the Wolves back another five. And I can't blame DJ for uh, taking out Vetters. He's uh, also plays cornerback, and that's one of the that's one of the exasperating. So Vetters getting field. rest here. They end the ball off to Cole. He gets out to the left. Oh, a nice block! A nice block by Nick Anderson. Almost shook the defender, and Cole breaks loose for a huge gain. The ball was at the 17. Take it down to the 31, a nice gain of 14. First down, South Kitsap. Cole just ripping this Olympic defense apart. Runs it to the outside, runs it to either the right side or the left side or even up the middle, he can get it done. Cole cut out to the left, got a nice block from Nick Anderson and was just a shoestring away of breaking it loose. As Cole comes out for a breather, Victor Valle in. Stevenson hands the ball to Valle, there goes Valle. He's got a little bit of room, he's gonna stay on his feet. Tries to cut inside, but the side judge is going to call him out of bounds. Good series of runs right here for, by South Kitsap and Valle and Cole. Even though penalties get him down and stuff and they mess up every once in a while, but they, they know they have the talented, uh, a talented enough team to get the ball where they want it to be. He gets the ball out to the 47, a nice 16 yard gain by Victor Valle. It'll be first and 10 for South Kitsap nearing midfield. Stevenson, take, he fakes, hands, rolls off to his right, looking for a man, he's got a man open. He's got Josh Meeker, my man Meek, and he makes the catch past the 40, down to about the 30, we'll call it the 37. It's gonna be about a 14 yard gain on the pass play from Stevenson to Meeker. Good short route run by uh, Josh Meeker. Uh, Stevenson rolling right, I thought they were gonna go deep but they ended up going short to Josh Meeker and he, uh, he, ca he caught the ball. He's got very good hands. I think he's got the most completions on this South Kitsap offense. A nice fake by Stevenson and he rolls to his right and hit Josh Meeker in the open field as uh, time has stopped here for just a moment. Looks like an equipment problem. Number 25, Andre Nelson. Looks like a helmet problem. He'll have to come out for at least one play. And Chris Hunt will come into the game. So the Wolves on the move here, a little mix of the pass and the run. Stevenson hands the ball off to Valle, gets a nice block, he gets out to the outside. There goes Victor Valle. They're no, they're gonna get him. They just brought him down, tripped up from behind. But not until about a 25 yard gain by Victor Valle down to the Olympic 14 yard line. So the Wolves doing a nice job here on offense. And it's and John Embaum comes out of the game and the Wolves threatening to score here right before half. Stevenson takes a little three-step drop. He's got Mayfield again, makes the catch, stays on his feet. Oh, and he almost gets in the end zone. He's down to the one. A 13-yard pass completion from Stevenson to Mayfield. 
And the Wolves are going to have a first and goal from the one yard line. And Phil, we can almost guess what's going to happen here. What do you want to guess? I'm going to guess that they're going to hand the ball off to Valle. They're going to get in that power eye formation. As Enbaum and Anderson come in to block, they do. There goes Victor. He dances into the end zone. Touchdown, South Kitsap. Victor Valle with a one yard touchdown run. And the South Kitsap Wolves get on the board again here and lead the Olympic Trojans 27 to six with 4.55 remaining in the first half. Yeah, and you were absolutely right with that uh, prediction there. You didn't even have to knock on wood. Uh, good series of offensive plays. Uh, South really, uh, you know, putting the coal into the fire and really, really heating this uh, offense up. And uh, both uh, spectrums of the offense getting it done. They threw the ball, they completed it to Josh Meeker, and then Valle comes in and runs the ball well. And uh, for the PAT, it looks like it is good. So Shannon Haney comes on for the extra point, and it is good. And the South Kitsap Wolves lead the Olympic Trojans 28 to six with 4.54 remaining in the first half after a one yard touchdown run by Victor Valle. And credit the right side of that line Matt Christenberry and Phil Bilderback creating a nice hole, then getting a couple of nice blocks from Chris Anderson and John Enbaum, and it's Victor Valle into the end zone. Nice job there. There he goes, touchdown South Kitsap. So the Wolves doing a nice job of controlling the ball here on offense, with mixing it up with some nice passing as Jared Stevenson comes in to give Travis Vetters a breather and uh, he did a nice job of running the uh, varsity offense right there. Yeah, and as I see, I, I gosh, I don't think South Kitsap had a second down. They might have had one or two, but a uh, whole bunch of first downs right there by South Kitsap. 15, 25, you know, 11 yards by Josh Meeker, whatever. They got the job done. So the Wolves will get ready to kick the ball off here to the Trojans, and we have a new kicker Coming in on the kickoffs here, number five, Hiram Davis, a 5'8", 141 pound junior. The kick is up, straight down the middle. Checks up, it's bobbled a little bit there by the Trojans. Oh my! He's taken down by a pack of wolves. That was number 34, Chris Hunt. And the Wolves say, Hunt, you ain't going nowhere but down. And right, that new kicker deciding uh, to kick the ball in bounds and showing what the special teams can do. A pack of Wolves come in and uh, put the wood to Hunt. Bring him down at the, looks like the 20 yard line. So the Wolves with nice coverage there on the kickoff. And the Olympic will have first and 10 from their own 20. Lambert splits left. Gratz looks to the right side. He's got a man open the ball, thrown low, but it's caught. He's taken down by the QB, number 11, Travis Vetters. A nice catch there by number 32, Zach Curry. Not much on the gain. We'll call it a gain of two, second and eight for Olympic. And Olympic trying to get it done and get some uh, kind of dink passes, seeing if their receivers can take it long here but it doesn't look like it's working very well for him as they throw on first down and get two yards. So Olympic will see what they can do here on offense before the first half. They send one man in motion. Gratz fakes, rolls to his left. He's got another man open and it's caught. Nice catch there by number 32, Zach Curry for a huge gain on the play. Also a nice block right there by number 80, Chris Lambert. A 20 yard reception. Curry from Gratz. It'll be first and 10 for Olympic. Gratz did a nice job of faking the handoff, ducking down, rolling to his left, and he found Curry and he got a nice gain on the play. So Olympic near midfield. 
Almost an offside there by the defense getting back. There's a fumble on the play. And it looks like the Wolves may have it. And they yeah. do. Yeah, John Enbaum, number 45, recovering that ball. So just like that, after a 20-yard pass reception, the South Kitsap Wolves come right back. There was a, a bobble on the snap. Gratz went back, but he didn't have the ball with him. And the ball got loose, and it was recovered by John Enbaum. And that's about the fourth or fifth time we mentioned him, his name this game. He's blocked for Ryan Cole. He's hurried the quarterback, and he's recovered a fumble. What a nice job this game by number 45, John Enbaum. So a crucial mistake by the Trojans, and the Wolves will take over. First and 10, a fake by Vetters rolls to his left. Oh, he's got a wide open Josh Meeker. My man, Meek. Nice catch, Meek. And he got the ball, and he got near the 10 yard line. We're gonna call it the 13. First down for the Wolves, and a nice pass play by Travis Vetters. That's about his third reception in this game, increasing his uh, his lead for receptions on the South Kitsap team. The ASB president doing a nice job, and good hands right there by Josh Meeker. That's one of the effective plays that the Wolves had, that little fake handoff to the inside in the rollout, and they capitalize on that as the Wolves are threatening to score here, again, in the first half. Vetters. Oh, there looks like a busted play. He rolls out to his left. He's just going to try and do what he can with it. He gets out of bounds. Vetters, oh, you bet. That's going to be a late hit out of bounds on Olympic. Vetters was getting to the outside, clearly going out of bounds, but he's going to be hit late by an Olympic defender. And the clock is stopped with three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the uh, first half. South Kitsap leading 28 to 6. Well, that looks like it's going to be half the distance to the goal line. So creep forward a couple of more yards, and the Wolves will have an excellent chance here to score once again before the half. Looked like it was a busted play. Wasn't sure if Vetters was going to hand the ball off to Cole, but he kept going out to the left, was chased by a defender and he just tried to get outside as far as he could. And as he was going out of bounds, he was struck by an Olympic defender, personal foul, half the distance. And that's It'll be first and goal for the Wolves at the eight. And that's the first time I've seen uh, Olympic hurry uh, put any pressure on Travis Vetters, and he, he dealt with it pretty well this time, it looked like. They send Mayfield to the right. They end the ball off to Cole but he's stopped and he's not going to get much on the play. In fact, he's going to lose a couple. A loss of two taken back to the 10. It'll be second and goal. A nice defensive stop there by the Olympic defensive line. Cole got the handoff, but they swarmed through and stopped him in his tracks. A little confusion on defense by Olympic. Vetters, a three-step drop. He's got Mayfield out on the right. Touchdown, South Kitsap. Travis Vetters, a 10-yard touchdown pass to number 25, Tyler Mayfield. That's a nice play right there by South Kitsap. Travis Vetters rolling, rolling left, throwing right, right across his body, showing he's very versatile. And uh, I was expecting South to run. I'm sure Olympic was too, but uh, they decided to throw the ball. Gets it into Tyler Mayfield for the touchdown. Vetters with a nice three-step drop. Mayfield was able to break away from the cornerback, and Vetters threw a nice ball to Mayfield where he made the catch for the touchdown. So the Wolves get on the board here again towards the close of the first half as Haney goes for the extra point. The kick is up, and it is good. So the South Kitsap Wolves get on the board again with 3.02 remaining in the first half and lead the Olympic Trojans 35 to six. This was a nice pass play here. Vetter's a nice little step, a nice ball thrown over there, a good catch by Mayfield as he tumbles through the end zone. So the Wolves mixing it up here. 
getting three touchdown runs by Ryan Cole, a one yard touchdown run by Victor Valle, and now a 10 yard touchdown pass and reception from Travis Vetters to Tyler Mayfield, and the Wolves are starting to put some points on the board. Good series of offensive plays right now for uh, South Kitsap, showing that they've got the momentum to do it, and they've got the talent to do it. Score 35 to six with three minutes and two seconds to go in the first half. Olympic will send back Chris Hunt. And they have number 22 listed, but I don't see a 22 in the program. So uh, he's going to be the ghost rider here, uh, receptor in the back as Hiram Davis kicks the ball off straight down the middle. And it's fielded by number 34, Hunt. He stays on his feet. High steps it down near the 30. We'll call it the 29, where Olympic will have 2.55 remaining in the first half to try and do something on the offensive side. And Phil, that last offensive series by South Kitsap was all due in part to the turnover by the Olympic Trojans and the fumble play in their own territory. Yeah, see, it's, it's really hard to stop 45 John Enbaum. I mean, it, it looks like he's, uh, he's out there all the time and he's uh, really taking advantage of his spot. So they hand the ball. Gratz hands the ball off to Luke Switzer. And Switzer does a nice job staying on his feet. Gets near the first down marker. He'll be close. A nice gain of eight yards. It'll be second and two for Olympic. So Olympic hurrying up here. They send Martin Gratz out to the right. They hand the ball straight up the middle and he will be near the first down marker. I believe he has it. Getting near the 39, we'll call it the 38. Oh, he's just a little short, maybe a yard. It'll be third down and one for Olympic. With uh, about one minute and 50 seconds remaining. Lambert splits left. Gratz hands the ball off to Switzer. He barrels his way over the middle, but he's taken down by number 66, Phil Estevez, as time will stop here momentarily as they as they move the sticks. So Olympic on the move here with 144 remaining in the first half. Nice series of runs by right here by uh, Olympic showing they can get the job done on the ground. And I'm a little surprised, Phil, that they're not going to any kind of a no huddle offense with time running out here. Oh, me either. So they have the ball at the 45. Gratz rolls out to his left flush. He's got a man open, but he throws it behind, almost intercepted. Almost intercepted by number 23, Jeremiah Martin, incomplete. It'll be second and 10, but most importantly, time will stop here. And there's a lot of time left. So if the Trojans aren't looking to possibly score here, they better be careful because if they turn the ball over to South Kitsap, there's gonna be a lot of time left. They come out with the wing T. They hand the ball straight up the middle to Switzer, stays on his feet, gets to midfield, where it will be third down. And DB, I really don't know if they're looking to score this time. I mean, I, I don't see why not. I even thought, and I thought South Kitsap might even call time out here. <laughs> Try and stop the clock, they could get the ball back. But I guess with a 35 to six lead, they're very comfortable for where they are on the defensive side. But uh, we have a timeout here as Olympic takes a timeout near the end of the first half. And we'd like to tell you that Dr. Beverly Cheney, our new district superintendent, is inviting community members to meet with her one-on-one. -on -one. If you'd like to talk with her about the South Kitsap School District, contact the district office to make an appoint appointment. And the phone number there at the South Kitsap School District is 876-7300. And as we uh, 
we, we go here, it's third and five for Olympic, and I, uh, I have yet to see him go into that shotgun formation, which uh, they aren't in right now. Man goes in motion, they hand the ball off to Switzer. He gets a nice block up the middle near the first down marker, but I believe he's going to be a little short. It'll be fourth down, and I would imagine that Olympic is just going to go for it here. As we're going to have an official's timeout to have a measurement. Say, friends, the South Kitsap School District needs substitute teachers and bus drivers. If you are interested, please contact the district office about those positions. And we'd also like to throw out a note to the parents that October 11th is an early release day for the students, and then no school on October 12th. Staff will be holding training and planning sessions. So Phil, looks like you guys are gonna have a day and a half off while we're gonna be stuck in the classrooms at meetings. That's all right with me, and uh, while you're jibber-jabbering over there about uh, days off and meetings and things like that, uh, Olympic, Olympic has a first down, okay? Well, I'll try and stop this jibber-jabbering and see what we can do here. As Gratz looks over the defense, he's gonna roll out to his right. He's got Lambert down the middle, but it's gonna be overthrown again. It was a nice move by Lambert, a nice out and up, but uh, Gratz was rushed again. By guess who, number 45, John Inbaum. And it's nice to see John Inbaum back in the lineup here on defense. And uh, the pass was incomplete. Uh, the ball was overthrown by a step or two, and Lambert couldn't get to it. So Wait. With 36 seconds remaining in the first half, Olympic will have second and 10 from the South Kitsap 45. Gratz drops back. He's being rushed. He's got a man. Overthrows, but it's caught. His intended receiver There's was number 36, Robert Hodge but it went over his hands and it was caught by Martin Gratz. And there was a penalty on the play, but that was pass interference on South Kitsap. The defender got there a little too early on Hodge, but the ball sailed over his head and was still caught by Olympic. So uh, they're going to tack on here. They're going to tack on, I think, a pass interference call. Wait for the call from the official. It was, it was pass interference by South Kitsap. So Olympic getting a break here right before half. And they'll have the ball placed at the South Kitsap 30 yard line. So good heads up play there by Martin Gratz to stay with it and catch the ball. I expect to see uh, Olympic right here. Uh, just a uh, few long bombs right here. Well, never mind, he's calling timeout. Well, Will Gratz overlooked the defense and didn't like what he saw, so he turned around and signaled a timeout, the second for Olympic, giving them one remaining here in the first half. So the Trojans are gonna wanna think things over here. There's plenty of time left on the clock as the Trojans are threatening to score here towards the end of the first half. And Phil, this is something that Olympic really needs here to stay in this ball game. Absolutely, they do. And uh, what I was going to say is I expect to see a few bombs here going straight towards the end zone, stack the receivers on either side. And uh, they've shown that the receivers have pretty good hands. And uh, Gratz, uh, he's got a good head on his shoulders and he knows what to do. So the Trojans break the huddle early, trying to catch South Kitsap offside. Little confusion on defense by the Wolves. And uh, looks like this is a passing situation as Gratz is in the shotgun. He rolls out to his left. He looks for a man. Oh, and it's tipped. Nice defense. Nice defensive play there by number 13, Chris Anderson. He read the quarterback very well on that play. And he stretched his hand out and tipped the ball as it was intended for the left-hand side. Looked like Lambert on that play. Incomplete. It'll be third and 10 for the Trojans. So third and 10 with 18 seconds to go. Let's see if they come out in the shotgun, and yes, they do. Looks like another passing down. Gratz takes the snap. He rolls to his right, looks for the throwback. 
But uh, that's going to be incomplete, and it was a nice coverage there by Jeff Goodwin, who stayed at home, and the Trojans didn't fool anybody on that play as Gratz rolled right and looked to throw back to his left, but Jeff Goodwin was right there to flush it out. Incomplete. It's going to be third and 10 for the Trojans. Yes, sir. Olympic wasn't fooling anybody with that play. They rolled right and threw a little short dink pass left. That wasn't getting the... That wasn't going to get the yard that they needed. That wasn't going to get the touchdown either. Lambert splits right. Gratz and Hunt left. Gratz rolls to his right. He's got a man, throws into, into coverage. And it looks like the pass is complete. A nice catch by Lambert. So with six seconds remaining, Olympic has the ball, it seems, around. And Olympic is going to use their final timeout. The ball will be placed at the 20-yard line. Thank you. So the Trojans stopping the clock here with six seconds, looking to try and get into the end zone. And Phil, I would imagine that they're going to look for a pass play here as the running game has been a little unsuccessful lately. Absolutely, I've seen both of these times, it's, it's been kind of uh, ironic here that they've stacked the left side with, you know, their pretty talented receivers and then rolled right where they have one receiver over there and he's, he's been covered really well by that South Kitsap secondary. We might look to see Gratz looking in the direction of Lambert, but uh, We'll have to see what they do as the other Gratz is split right. He takes the handoff, rolls to his left. Oh, but no, he's going to be taken down by number 45, John Enbaum. Nice play by Enbaum. And that is the end of the second half. And he wasn't fooled there as Enbaum gets fired up as he dances off the field. Good to see John Enbaum back as, as he's almost celebrating a little too much. He almost stumbles on his feet. So uh, looks like we're going to go down the field with some more fans, and let's check out see how they're doing about the game. The game's going by great, and the guys are really pulling through. And we're really looking forward to see the Wolves finish them off in the second half. Do you think the prize doing a lot of here today at the game? <laughs> some of those supportive South Kitsap fans and uh, the Trojans from Olympic threatening to score right before the first half but they were unsuccessful with a nice first half stop there by number 45 John Embaum flushing Gratz out of the pocket and taking him down so the Wolves lead the Olympic Trojans 35 to 6 here at halftime at Joe Knowles Stadium and right now I'm keeping a tab of how many times we're saying John Embaum's name. It seems like we're talking about him more than we are about Cole. That's very surprising. Cole has three touchdowns and John Embaum has about two hurries, one sack, and one fumble recovery. That's the nice thing about this South Kitsap football team is that they are so diverse in terms of the players who can come out onto the field and step it up. As a lot of people think that it's just Ryan Cole, but it really isn't. Uh, he does a lot of the work, but we have a great offensive line. We've got players like Victor Valle who can come in and score touchdowns. And we've got Travis Vetters doing a nice job at quarterback tonight, hitting some key receivers such as Tyler Mayfield, also looking for Josh Meeker at the tight end position. So that's one of the things that makes South Kitsap so effective is that they have all of these weapons. Yeah, in the last game versus Central Kitsap, it was really evident that uh, they needed to concentrate more on throwing the ball than uh, running the ball. Even though you have Barry Sanders in the backfield, you still have to throw the ball. Well, one thing that's going on here tonight at Joel Knowles Stadium here at South Kitsap High School is uh, there's going to be a very small ceremony here to induct the new track here at the high school, which was completed today, and also to induct the new scoreboard that was given to us, donated by the community. And 
thanks to the funds that were generated through the four-year maintenance and operations levy, we now have a safe track for student and community use. And folks, I'm telling you, this is one beautiful track that you will see here at South Kitsap High School. We are very fortunate to have received a new scoreboard donated by the Port Orchard Rotary Club's Phil Gray Memorial Foundation. Welcome. All students, right. staff, parents, and community members are invited to As you can see, we've got a beautiful new track. Oh, all right. Does it say on? Does that say on? It says on. Okay. Testing, testing. One, two. Testing. Testing. Let me get Brian on the line. Hey, Wayne. Got everything working? We tested it before. Testing. Brian, this is Dave. Oh, well. Oh, is that what? I turned it on the bottom. It's not working. Can you get down here? So Ed Santos down on the field instructing his athletes, these great runners of his, that they're going to take, like you said, Phil, the inaugural lap that will help officially christen the track here at South Kitsap High School. And there they are, they look pumped and ready to go. What do you think, DB? Actually, they look like they're a little bit cold. But what a beautiful day we've been having. Uh, we couldn't have asked for finer weather, and we know that the staff and the maintenance crew and the crews that have been working on the track have been working round the clock to making sure that we have a very fine facility installed here at the high school. That coach Ed Santos looks like he's kind of warm out there, but I think that once the uh, athletes get jogging here, once these as you can see, we have a beautiful track, new track, and a wonderful scoreboard. And I want to, from what I understand, the, score, the track was well used by the community, but became un unsafe. Anyway, tonight we're here to dedicate both the refurbished track and the scoreboard. I'd first like to thank the entire South Kitsap community for their, their support of the 2001 maintenance and operation levy, which provided the funds for the refurbishing of the track. So thank you. Second, I'd like to thank the South Kitsap School Board for approving the project last spring so it would be ready to go this fall. Okay, I'd like also like to say a special thank you to Tom O'Brien and his staff at the South Kitsap School District Facilities and Operation Department because thanks to their heroics, this track is now complete and ready for us to use. Now I would like to introduce Wayne Center, Port Orchard Rotary Club president, who's going to say a few words about the scoreboard. Thank you. I guess we have to keep it pointed down. Okay. Uh, it uh, gives me a great deal of pleasure uh, on behalf of the Port Orchard Rotary Club to be part of providing a new scoreboard for Joe Knowles Field. The scoreboard would, would not have been possible without the generosity of the Gray family who formed the foundation with Port Orchard Rotary Club. That foundation goes to help fund youth activities in the South Kitsap area. In your program, on page 13, there's an address that if you would like to make a tax-deductible donation to the Phil Gray Memorial Foundation, please feel free to do so. Now I'd like you to help me thank 
who really deserves the credit for this brand new scoreboard here, and that's the Gray family. Let's give them a big cheer. Thank you, Wayne, the Port Orchard Rotary, and the Gray family. And now I'd like to introduce the principal of South Kitsap High School, Dave Columbine. Good evening, everyone. I have to tell you, I'm extremely proud to be principal at South Kitsap High School. I want to thank you as community members for your support. Because of you, we made all this possible for our kids and for our community. You are the greatest support we have, and I want to say thank you for that. I also want to thank the school board and the superintendent for all their support. We have the greatest student body in the state of Washington. Also, I want to thank Mr. Steve Reichman, athletic director, for all his hard, detailed, communicative skills to help pull this off, too. Steve Reichman, wherever you are, thank you. When we celebrate something and christen something, it's usually with a bottle of champagne. We don't have that tonight, but we're going to christen this track, and I need your help. We're going to do a big cheer. I need everybody on their feet, everybody on their feet here. I need you to scream really loud and be a part of this, and this is what we're going to do. Over here, this side is going to yell, we are this side, SK. Over here, we are SKHS. And then everybody's going to yell, wolves. And you're going to take your fingers like this and howl. Oh, woo! So here it goes, it goes, we are SK, we are SKHS, everybody screams wolves, and then, oh, woo! and then we're going to do the clap chant, and when I put my hand down, you got to stop clapping. So parents, it's a real test for you. The kids already have it down. Here we go, real loud now. One, two, three. It gives me great honor and pleasure to introduce you one guy that's so enthusiastic about this track. Please welcome Ed Santos, head track coach. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the people who helped get this track put together. I've been involved with the track program at South Kitsap for the, about the last 19 years. I've seen good tracks and one very bad track, so this is a wonderful thing for us. My cross country team is going to, here in just a second, do a ceremonial first lap of the track. Thanks for coming out. Thank you. 
Welcome back to Joe Knowles Stadium. Here ready for the kickoff of the second half as the South Kitsap Wolves lead the Olympic Trojans 35 to six. Uh, the South Kitsap Wolves putting on some points here in the first half with three touchdowns by Ryan Cole, uh, one touchdown run by Victor Valle, and a 10 yard touchdown pass play from Travis Vetters to Tyler Mayfield. And then the Wolves turning it over on the other side with the defensive part and doing a nice job of stopping Olympic. Olympic has not capitalized on some decent offensive plays here tonight, doing a nice job of controlling the ball. And um, we'll have to see what the Trojans plan to do coming out. They've got to hang on to that ball and get into the end zone. As the Trojans get ready to kick off here, Justin Wisdom and the Wolves have Victor Valle and Ryan Cole back deep to receive. The ball is up, it's going to be a short kick fielded by Valle at the 20 yard line, makes a couple of cutbacks, stays on his feet and he's taken down about the 37 yard line of the Wolves. So the Wolves will get the ball back and it will be key here, Phil, for Olympic to try and stop the Wolves. Yes, and they have uh, done a very good job of that in the second quarter and uh, in the first quarter it looked like uh, they might be able to really stop the run but uh, gosh they really uh, either either time they put in the, the second running back in Victor Valle or the first string, string running back Ryan Coy he sees a lot of uh, open holes there and he, he gets the job done. Well, Jared Stevenson comes in at quarterback for Travis Vetters they pitch the ball out to Cole he gets out to the right side gets a nice block makes a cut up inside uh, and he's going to cross midfield to the 49-yard line in Olympic territory. Nice block right there by number 29, Phil Thomas. So Stevenson giving Vetters a little break here in the second half. Vetters a much-needed break as he plays on both sides of the ball. And they get a nice running play by Cole for a first down. We'll call it first down at the 48. Stevenson looks over the defense. They end the ball off to Thomas. He bounces off of a defender, stays on his feet, drives forward, and falls down near the 40-yard line. We'll call it the 41. A gain of eight on the play. It'll be second and two. Nice run there by Phil Thomas. A nice run and a nice block before that. Phil Thomas is... Uh really showing that he can he can do the job. So the Wolves come out fired up again as Stevenson fakes the handoff to Cole, rolls right. He's got a man open, he's got Mayfield. It's gonna be close, and it is, it's, oh, it's no good. It's incomplete. Boy, it sure looked like he had a foot in there when he made the reception, but the side judge ruled him out of bounds, incomplete. Yeah, you know, and uh, that was a great, great, uh, what do you want to call that great uh, fake right there by Stevenson? Uh, and uh, I've seen Mayfield get both feet in there before, and I, I thought he had him in this time, but I guess he didn't. Meeker was open on that play, too. I've seen him run that play before, and he decided to go to Mayfield, go deep for the touchdown, and he didn't didn't keep both feet in the. So it's third and two for the Wolves. They end the ball up to Cole. Oh, he gets a nice hole, nice opening, and there's just a, a burst of speed there, nice acceleration by Cole, and he turns... The two yard, a much needed two yards for the first, and he gets about 20 on the play. Nice run by Ryan Cole. He'll get down to the Olympic 21 yard line. Nice opening though by Ben Duncan and Chase Decker on the left side of the offense to create that hole for Cole. Stevenson takes the snap, fakes, nice fake, rolls out to his right, he's got a lot of running room, shakes and bakes a little bit, and he's gonna take it outside, goes out of bounds, at the 12, he's close to a first down. Let's we'll see where they spot it here. Yeah, at second string QB, uh, Stevenson showing he can, he's very versatile and that he can run, and so can Vetters, but we just haven't seen him do it this year. 
And uh, Stevenson doing a nice job in running that. It's a nice fake by Stevenson, and then roll out to the right. It's going to be second down in inches, about six inches to go here for South Kitsap. Stevenson looks over the defense. Cole gets the handoff. Nice cut back up inside. That's a touchdown, Ryan Cole. Nice move by Cole there. Tried to get to the outside, stop, cut hard straight up the middle as the Olympic defenders went line by. And we're gonna call that a touchdown. Nice job by Ryan Cole, but a nice job by the offensive line there, forcing the defense to the outside. Ryan Cole with four touchdowns this game. Showing he can get the job done, cutting it up the middle, to the left or to the right, doesn't matter, he can go in for the touchdown. You give the ball to Ryan Cole and he's hard to take down, especially with moves like that. So the Wolves get the ball back and they score quickly as Shannon Haney attempts the extra point here. The snap is bobbled, but he's able to get it down. The kick is up and good. So with 9.55 remaining in the third quarter, the South Kitsap Wolves lead the Olympic Trojans 42 to six. And I'll tell you what, Bill, if you look at this replay here, you're gonna see some nifty moves by Ryan Cole. Cole gets the handoff. Trojan defenders go, oh, nice move, nice cut back up through the middle. He high steps it in for a touchdown, his fourth of the evening. And again, Ryan Cole looks like he's heading for a big night. And Phil, we got to tell you, look at the, the South Kitsap High School cheerleaders doing an excellent job here of these of these push-ups that they're doing. And uh, you know, we got to throw this in there. What a great group of girls uh, that we have here rooting for our team. And even though. Uh this is kind of an onslaught, kind of a game, 42 to six with 9.55 to go in the second half. The SK cheerleaders are doing their job and keeping the fans still in it and still, uh, still rooting for this SK team. Hiram Davis with the kickoff, straight down the middle, bobbles, oh, and it's gonna go over the head of Hunt. He bobbles it around, he's not gonna get very far. Oh, he runs into his own man and he'll be taken down by South Kitsap at about the 11 yard line. Hunt he, runs, into the, runs into his own player at number 42, Cl Clyde the Glide Switzler. Looks like he was in the wrong position at the wrong time and just uh, messed, in, messed his own player up and they get bad field position at the 11. The ball skipped and jumped up, went right over Hunt's head and uh, he touched it so he had to go pick it up. And uh, right when he turned around, ran into his own man and all of the Wolves were right there. So um, there's going to be a penalty on the flag as Tyler Mayfield tried to get off the field and uh, a nice defensive stop there by the Wolves is going to be all for naught as the Wolves are going to be flagged for having too, men, too many men on the field. I think Olympic saw that. He was about halfway off the field when they uh, snapped the ball and he uh, inevitably wasn't able to get off the field and so there's a penalty. So a little confusion there on defense and uh, the Wolves are going to be penalized five yards, so instead of second down, it'll be first and five for Olympic. So the Trojans getting a break here, hoping they can do a little bit of damage controlling this ball. What a gorgeous evening tonight here at Joe Knowles Stadium. There's a double handoff Oh, a nice big and a nice block by Gratz, and then a nice cut up the field out of that wishbone formation. Who's that, number 82? Sean Guerrero gets the handoff, cut up, got a nice block from Gratz, gets out left, and he gets the first down to the 22. And uh, Olympic showing the power of this multi-set offense means that they can... Uh, cut it into shotgun or uh, they're not constrained to the wing T all the time, but they can use it whenever they want. They split Lambert right. Guerrero goes in motion. Gratz drops back, he's got a man wide open and it's tipped. It was tipped by number nine, Brendan Mueller. Nice defense on the play. Pass was intended for number 40, Joel Ackley. Incomplete, it'll be second and 10. So Olympic going right to the pass. 
and uh, Olympic not being able to take advantage of this uh, this uh, these penalties brought on uh, by South Kitsap and uh, let's see if they can do it. They send a man in motion, fake, they gets the handoff straight up the middle, runs into his own man. Oh, and he's taken down by a couple of wolves there. Nice hit by Andy Sund, the leading tackler on the South Kitsap defense. Sund amassing some 54 tackles already in the first four games of the year. So good to have Andy Sund there at linebacker. And uh, let's see if Olympic can get it done here. It doesn't. Sh it doesn't seem like they will, but uh, let's let's hope for the best here for Olympic. So a big third down play here for Olympic. Gratz rolls out to his right. He's got a man. Fakes. He tries to hit the man underneath. Nice hit by number seven, Jeff Goodwin. Just pounds the guy right in the back. The ball was complete, but it will be short. And actually, the ball is intercepted. I thought that it was. I looked there and I didn't see the man until he caught it and I didn't see the receiver for Olympic and then I, the, all of these South Kitsap defenders get up, start cheering. It was a nice interception. I believe that was by number seven, Jeff Goodwin. We'll strike that and reverse it. Interception by uh, number seven, Jeff Goodwin. So nice defense there by the Wolves. And they will take over at the Olympic 27. Stevenson with the fake, rolls out to his right doesn't have anybody open, but he's looking for his intended receiver, 15, Brad Zamel, into the game. The pass is incomplete. That was nice coverage there by Olympic. But it'll be all for naught. Second and 10, South Kitsap. Yeah, when Stevenson rolled out to the right, it looked like the, his receivers were going to be open, but uh, uh, the Olympic uh, secondary read that very well and showed good coverage. New tailback in for the Wolves, number 27, Lorenzo Bryant. He gets the handoff. He stays on his feet, almost dragged down. Does a nice job going forwards, heading north. And that's what you're supposed to do as a running back. He, he barrels forward for a gain of six. It'll be third down and five. So the South Kitsap Wolves making a few substitutions here. And let's just hope we can keep up with all these subs. So with third down and four, South Kitsap has to uh, try and get the first down here. Let's see if they can get it. Stevenson hands the ball off straight up the middle to, that is Brennan Mueller, and he will get past the first down marker. A gain of about five will place the ball at the 12 yard line. First down, South Kitsap. So the Wolves doing a nice job here controlling the ball. As number 88, Nate Wittig, a 5'10", 145-pound senior is now in the game, split right as a wideout. The ball is handed off to Lorenzo Bryan. He's taken down from behind the line of scrimmage. That was number, number 38, Luke Switzer. It's a 5'10", 180-pound senior. Stevenson hands the ball off, but they went nowhere. There will be a loss on the play, a loss of two yards. It'll be second and 12. So the Wolves showing a variety of players in different positions here, getting a little PT for people. Stevenson looks over the defense. They hand the ball off to Bryant on the counter delay. He high steps it across the middle, almost gains all of that back. Nice run by Lorenzo Bryant. Gets inside the 10 to the eight yard line. Nice run and uh, nice blocks right there by South Kitsap. Forming those holes. Nice run by Bryant as Phil Thomas gets back into the game. So the Wolves will have a third down and two from the eight. Looks like they'll be in that power eye formation. Stevenson hands the ball off to Bryan. He stays on his feet. He's gonna get into the end zone. Touchdown, Lorenzo Bryant. 
Nice run by Bryant there from eight yards out. Touchdown, South Kitsap. Nice run by Bryant. Yeah, Bryant it, cutting it right up the middle, just like we've seen Cole do, and we've seen, uh, who was that, Valle do before. Lorenzo Bryant showing the South Kitsap depth that we have in this running backs right, right here. So the Wolves get on the board again. The Wolves get on the board again here as they will be attempting, Haney will be attempting the PAT. We get a shot here on the replay. Nice job by Bryant, bounces off a defender. Almost dragged down. Stays on his feet. Was grabbed from behind by Andy Shear for Olympic. And it looks like there's a little botch play. There's a rollout, a pass. Oh, and it's just deflected. Nice job there, intended for number 19, Josh Meeker. So the extra point is no good, but the South Kitsap Wolves get on the scoreboard again and lead the Olympic Trojans 48 to six with 540 remaining in the third quarter. So a good uh, series of plays here by the South Kitsap offense showing that they have, uh, have the depth to get it done. And uh, against these weaker teams, they can really uh, as you said, they can get some uh, their substitutions, some good PT. And, uh, and Lorenzo, Lorenzo uh, getting his first touchdown of the year. So the Wolves looking to go to the running game again. They get a nice touchdown run, eight yards out by Lorenzo Bryant. And they go up even further on the Olympic Trojans. And if Olympic doesn't start putting it together here, it's going to be a long night. And ready to kick, number five here, I'm Davis. And Olympic sends back number 22 and number 34, Chris Hunt, to receive the kick. Straight down the middle, a little squib kick, stops in his place, picked up by Hunt. Stays on his feet, goes up the middle, but he's dragged down from behind. Good tackle right there by number 12 and number eight, Nick Anderson. It's a dual effort right there. Good Dusty job by Starkweather, a nice job on, in on that tackle as well. Good job by South Kitsap special teams. So we're gonna see some uh, substitutions coming into the game here, getting a lot of experience for some of these younger guys for the South Kitsap Wolves. Looks like a little confusion on the on the defensive end here. Couple guys, like Wolves still got guys scrambling around out here as Gratz rolls out to his right, but he's being flushed out of the pocket. He looks for a man open, incomplete, intended for Martin Gratz. But he was flushed out by Albert Jenkins, who shook off the tackle and forced Gratz to throw a hurried pass. Nice defense there by Jenkins. It'll be second and 10 Olympic. And we'll call it the 27 yard line. Gratz fakes the handoff inside, keeps it, rolls out to his left. And he's, oh, he's hit hard by Victor Valle, nice takedown by Valle. He gets up, he's pumped, he's excited. Nice defensive stop there. But only after a gain of about five yards, it's going to be third and five for Olympic. Nice defense there by Valle. Yeah, I tell you, these uh, South Kitsap players are really versatile on both sides of the ball. Valle's got the speed, he can run with the ball, and he, he can also hit too. Martin Gratz splits right. Meeker comes close to the line of scrimmage. Gratz rolls out to his right. Oh, oh, and it's almost intercepted. Gratz threw it right into the hands of Josh Meeker. My man, Meek. And he almost picked it off, but it was incomplete. It'll be fourth down for Olympic. Nice defense there by Josh Meeker. So the Wolves really coming to light here tonight. Phil looks like a little bit of frustration is being taken out after losing last week to Central Kitsap. As the punt is away, 
It's going to be fielded by Albert Jenkins. The ball is bobbled, fumbled around a little bit, and I think Olympic might have it. It hit Jenkins right in the chest, and they do. The Trojans have it. So a turnover on the punt, and uh, the South Kitsap coaches do not look happy there on the sideline. No, sir, at... Uh that kick just hit him, or that punt, yeah, just hit him right in the chest, and uh, Olympic just just showing good special teams this time and uh, not kicking the ball out of bounds, and good things happen when he kicked the ball in bounds. They did it this time, they recover the ball. So the Trojans get a break here, and they hand the ball off. Looks like number 36, Robert Hodge, gets the call. He's gonna get a couple on the play. We'll call it second and eight. The ball spotted at the 32. They hand the ball straight up the middle. Not much on the gain. It's gonna be third down for Olympic. With about four minutes and 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Well, the one thing that a team doesn't wanna do when they have a huge lead is start getting confused and making some mistakes and errors. Otherwise, that's how teams get back in it. As Olympic will have a third down and four to go here. As Gratz fakes, rolls the route to the right, he's got Lambert open but he's going to overthrow him again. And I'll tell you, if Gratz is on the money a couple of times here tonight, they'd have a couple of touchdowns, but he overthrows Lambert again, incomplete. It'll be fourth and four for Olympic. Absolutely, DB. There's been some good routes run by those uh, Olympic receivers. He's just uh, put too much arm on it or took a little too, too much off of it. And he, uh, he's, he hasn't been on the money tonight. Lambert's been making some nice moves, outs and ups, slants, but uh, Gratz has just not been able to connect as Olympic will go for it here on fourth down. They do the double handoff, and uh, a nice play there by the running back, number 32, Zach Curry, and it will result in a first down. So a nice job there by Curry to help get the first down for Olympic. And the ball will be placed at about the 30 yard line as more substitutes come into the game for the Wolves. The ball was handed off there. That was a quick play to Steve Dillon. He makes his way across the middle of the field for a few more. And the wool, and, and here we go, Phil. This is where we're going with the no huddle offense. Gratz hands the ball off to Curry again. He's hit, but stays on his feet. Keeps his momentum going, and he's gaining some yards here. Eight on the last play, gets a few more on this one, and the Trojans are looking to score. Yeah, Curry showing some good speed, running it right up the middle. And it looks like he's down, though. There is a player down on the field. Can't quite see who it is yet. But hopefully we'll get a report here in just a minute. We'd like to take this time to let you know that a new episode of Wolf Tracks premieres this Thursday evening at 7.30 right here on BKAT, your local public access channel. Featured stories include a look at the girls' swim team, the inside story on our new track, and we'll take you to a recent pep assembly here at South Kitsap High School. That's this Thursday at 7.30 on local access channel. And I'd like to say that that's uh, produced by yours truly, DB. You're the man, Phil. <laughs> right now we have a more serious situation going on right now. But we still haven't got the number on that player. We'd never like to see this. He's been down there pretty long. Well, we sure hope that whoever it is, that this young man will be okay. As he's lying down there on the field pretty still. But uh, he's being tended to, and I think he'll be okay. Looked like they were trying to tend to his knee. Looks like a possible knee injury here. See a little bit of movement, and that's a good sign. So hopefully this young man will be just fine. It's 
So we've had quite a start here in the second half of play. Wolves still leading 48 to six over Olympic with 309 remaining in the third quarter. Wolves scored two times quickly as, uh, and he gets up, that's good. That's really good. That is, I believe, yes it is. That is Steve Dillon. So it's nice to see him walking off under his own power. Hopefully everything's gonna be okay. And the Trojans, though, will have a first down. It is a first and goal from the, we'll call it the seven yard line. Gratz hands the ball off to Switzer. He doesn't get very much on the play. He's taken down by Kristen Berry and Enbaum. Nice defense there. It'll be second and goal. Maybe a gain of one on the play. We'll call it marked at the six. So the Trojans looking to get into the end zone here. Gratz hands the ball off to Switzer and he gets nowhere, taken down. Nice job, that, was, that looked like Brennan Mueller there. Nice job as he took the man down and that defensive line plugged up those holes, going nowhere. So it's gonna be third down for Olympic. And the Wolves are doing a nice job here, Phil, of stopping the run. So we'll see what the Trojans can do here as they break the huddle. Gratz looking to his right, sending a man in motion. He drops back, he's got a man over the middle. The ball is caught. The ball is caught by Joel Ackley, but not much gain on the play. And it will be fourth down. Nice defensive stop there by the Wolves. Yes, and that brings up fourth down and goal for uh, Olympic. Let's see if they're gonna go for it or kick the field goal. I wouldn't blame them if they go for it though. I would imagine Olympic will be going for it here. The ball's at the three yard line. They hand the ball off to, off to Switzer and he's not going anywhere. Switzer is stopped and they tried on four plays right there to run it up the middle, but there was no going anywhere. Nice defense by the Wolves. Well, DV, just until that injury, they were going to a no-huddle offense, and they started back with the, no, with the huddle and really brought, brought their momentum down. And uh, gosh, they, uh, it worked before, but it didn't work this time. As South Kids have figured out what, what was happening, they filled their holes. I'm a little surprised they didn't try to get to the outside or even look for a pass in the flat, but uh, uh, the South Kids have defense doing a nice job here as we have a whole new pack of Wolves coming on out here. A lot of extra playing time for some of the reserves here. Seems to be a little confusion, but hopefully they'll be able to get things together as Jared Stevenson remains at quarterback for the Wolves. Nate Wittig split right. They hand the ball off to Lorenzo Bryant, I believe. Bryant gets the call again. So he looks like he's going to be the workhorse here for a while. As all the whistles blow. Not sure what the call is right here. I think a man had to come out there for Olympic. They get a substitution. Not much on the game. As Brendan Mueller comes back into the game. Bill Thomas coming out of the game. Only a gain a couple on the play. It's gonna be second and eight for South Kitsap, deep in their own territory. Stevenson looks over the defense, hands the ball off to the middleman. Bryant gets the call again. He bounces off of a defender, stays on his feet. Nice job by Bryant. He gets a big gain on the play. Maybe 12 yards or so. A nice pickup. And he's going to make it down to about the 18 yard line of South Kitsap. That was a good run, and that was a good job by South Kitsap to create gaps and create holes for uh, their uh, probably third string running back, Bryant. 
Lorenzo the offensive Brown. line doing a nice job creating some more holes. Wittig split right. They hand the ball quickly to the fullback, the up man. That's Brendan Mueller. Doesn't get much on the play. As the horn sounds, signaling the end of the third quarter. So the South Kitsap Wolves lead the Olympic Trojans 48 to six here at Joe Knowles Stadium. And Phil, we have to be pleased with the way that South Kitsap has been playing tonight. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we've seen a lot of depth in, in their players. They're Jared Stevenson's at, at the helm right now, replacing Travis Vetters. Uh, Brent, Lorenzo Brent is uh, taking the spot of Victor Valle and Ryan Cole, and uh, it's really worked out for them. They've been able to get the job done and get the, get the first downs. Well, a few of these games here uh, that the Wolves have been playing in, a lot of these guys have been getting beat up pretty good. You know, a lot of them are tired and, and uh, fortunate for them. When you have a comfortable lead like this, you're able to have a lot of substitutions come in and uh, it gives some of the starters a little bit of rest time here. So, uh, especially with some key guys who are injured, especially on the offensive and defensive line, it's nice to be able to do that. And it's a good thing for some of these reserves to come on in and get some playing time. So the Wolves are going to be looking to capitalize here as the start of the fourth quarter will be coming along as the Wolves break the huddle with a little bit of encouragement from head coach DJ Secretson. So the Wolves come out in the I formation with Lorenzo Bryant getting the bulk of the running here on a nice counter. He stays on it. Oh, what a fake by Stevens. Oh my! Oh, what a hit on Stevenson. I saw Stevenson, it looked like he'd handed off to Bryant, but it was a nice fake. He rolled out to his right. I didn't catch the number on the defense there. All I saw was Stevenson heading for the sideline, and then his head just snapped back like a twig. Oh, my, what a hit. Absolutely, the guy just took him right off his feet and uh, made him land right on his back. That's a tough hit right there. And it was, a, and it was, it was, and he absorbed it well as he just popped right back up. So Stevenson, this time he hands the ball. Oh, there's a mix up in the backfield. There's a fumble on the play and Olympic is going to get the ball. So a little mix up there from Stevenson to Bryant and the Wolves fumble the ball, turn it over and Olympic gets a break here. And uh, maybe that hit took more of effect than we thought, DB. He, he said he just got right back up, but maybe it shook him a little bit. Well, we'll see how Olympic responds as they're going to get the ball at their own, at the South Kitsap 23. As we have an offsides here. By, that was number 66, Phil Estevez. Unless he was drawn offsides. And he was, it is, it's a false start on the offense. So scoot the Trojans back five more yards. The ball will be at the 28. Well, the Trojans could use a score here as they hand the ball off to number 22 and he gets it to the outside, but he's not going anywhere. He might have gotten to the line of scrimmage again, not much past that where it'll be second down for the Trojans. As more substitutions coming in and out of the game for the Wolves on defense. Yeah, I was about to say that uh, defense haven't, hasn't got much rest in time, but they do. They, they brought in their second string. So, I mean, they've been out there pretty often, but they got different players out there. Gratz drops back, looks for a man. He does. He's got a man open in the middle. That's number three. Dustin Jones, and it looks like we also have a new quarterback in. Looked like it was number 18, Cody Gap. And I tell you though, DB, if you're looking to get some yardage and you're looking to score a touchdown, 
Those little dink passes aren't going to get you anywhere against the South Kitsap secondary. They get the double handoff there. Actually, at quarterback is number 15, Jeff Shaw. And the Olympic running back gets down to the 20 yard line where it will be fourth down. And about seven. And seven yards to go. The lone setback, number 22. Two in the backfield. Robert Hodge as well. Shaw rolls to his right. He's looking for a man. He dumps it off. And he's got number 40 open. Nice pass play and catch to Joel Ackley. It'll be complete. Down inside the 10. Mark it down at the 8. A nice rollout by Jeff Shaw. Looking for his man. And looked like he was going down. And right before he did... He dumped it off to Ackley. So the Trojans looking to get onto the board as Martin Gratz splits to his left. Shaw keeps it, rolls out to his left, and he's flushed by some wolves. He's going to be taken down. Nice job on defense there. Number eight, Nick Anderson. The speed of Nick Anderson chases him down, takes Shaw for a loss of about one on the play. It'll be second and goal from the nine. Nice defense by Nick Anderson. Yeah, even though this is uh, South Kitsap secondary, or it might, you know, a few substitutions, and they still, they're pretty strong, and they're very talented on defense. Shaw hands the ball straight up the middle to Switzer, and he barrels his way across the middle for a touchdown. The quick handoff to Luke Switzer, and he gets in for the score. So the Trojans, nice job here of getting into the end zone. Finally get on the board with 9.16 remaining in the game and now trail the Wolves 48-12. to And I would imagine they're going to go for it here for the two-point conversion. Shaw looks over the defense. There's a shift. They end the ball, double handoff. Number 82 gets the ball and he's going to get in. So... A converted two-point conversion. Sean Guerrero gets into the end zone, and the Trojans get the score here. So with 9-16 remaining in the game, the Trojans trail the Wolves 48-14. to But, Phil, I don't know if this is going to be enough here for the Trojans to make a comeback uh, on the Wolves. Yeah, it's highly doubtful unless they get about... Uh four or five interceptions for a touchdown. Uh, and uh, the South Kitsap offense, I I think I've seen a few series of plays where they they haven't got a second down yet. So uh, let's, see that, let's see them get it done this time. We might even look for the Trojans to go for an onside kick, but they have to be careful if they do that because if it's a failed attempt, then the South Kitsap Wolves would be getting the ball in pretty good field position. So, uh, But you never know what's going to happen here. I would yeah. imagine that the Trojans are going to be pulling out a lot of tricks right now. Yeah, and as you mentioned that before, I've seen Central Kitsap do that last game, and it really worked for them. They got it. They kicked it 10 yards, and then they uh, recovered it against South Kitsap. They did that twice as their actual kickoff return, and they uh, kicked it onside, and they recovered it. So let's see if Olympic can do it here. Well, the Wolves send back the speedster Victor Valle and Nick Anderson. But the Trojans look like they're going to overload one side a little bit. We'll see what they attempt to do. So the Wolves are going to look to safeguard against any kind of an onside kick. Hopefully they'll get that ball and they'll be able to control it as much as possible. The Trojans doing a nice job here, hanging tough, not quitting. As the shift is on, they're going to shift over to the right side and attempt the kickoff. It's a little squib kick up the middle, and the Wolves are just going to fall on it. Nice job. Not much of, a, of an onside kick attempt here. I think they were just trying to catch the Wolves off guard, but the Wolves have recovered, and they will take over first and 10 from their own 38-yard line. And absolutely, that wasn't a smart play by uh, number 13, Wisdom. Uh, you know, you stack one side, and then you kick it to that side. You don't kick it straight up the middle. Maybe you were right, they were trying to catch him off guard. 
So the Wolves offense getting a little inspiration here from the head coach, DJ Sigurdsson, probably telling him to hang on to that football, play with a little bit of intensity as more substitutions come in here into the game for the Wolves. And a new quarterback in here, number 35, Tommy Patrick. They hand the ball. Oh, what a hit! Nice job by number six, Brent Nickerson, meeting a, an Olympic defender head on, but staying on his feet, bouncing off to the side, getting a nice gain on the play. Looks like he's going to gain about eight yards. It'll be second and eight. Nice job by Nickerson. So some more substitutions here for the Wolves. Tommy Patrick now in at quarterback. They hand the ball off to Nickerson. He gets outside, not, not much of an opening there, but he's able to cross the cross midfield there. We'll call it the 49, and the Wolves get a first down. So nice job there, and uh, nice to see here. A 5'8", 149-pound sophomore, Tommy Patrick, leading the offense here for the Wolves. Yeah, no, that guy's a pretty nice guy. As you mentioned, he's in one of my classes. Uh, I'm going to play him pickleball next time. Number 95, Victor Rybachuk split to the right. Nate Wittig split, or excuse me. Oh, there's a fumble on the play. Oh, and they get it back. Boy, that's one thing that the South Kitsap coaches didn't want to see again was a fumble. Patrick looked like he had a hard time handing the ball off but they were able to get it back, but uh, not after a substantial loss on the play. Loss of about 10 yards, it'll be second and 20 for the Wolves. As number 84, Pat Kelly comes out of the game. Rybachuk split right. They hand the ball off to Nickerson. He holds the ball with two hands. Boy, he's doing a nice job of protecting it. Gets out near midfield, about right at the 50-yard line. And Brent Nickerson, not a very big guy, 5'8", 161. Looking in there, looked like a fullback, just barreling through those guys. And with uh, about third and long, you might see Patrick show us that he can throw the ball. So it's third and 10 from midfield. The Wolves try and hang on to the ball here. Brent Nickerson getting a majority of the running. He does, he gets, oh no, and the fake doesn't work there for Patrick. They tried to run that little fake handoff and Patrick was gonna keep it and roll left. But he's going nowhere on that play. And he was taken down by a pack of Trojans and he's going nowhere, loss of about We'll call a loss of five on the play. It's going to be fourth and 15 for the Wolves at their own 45-yard line. So it's going to be fourth down here, and the Wolves will be kicking it away. Hunt back to receive. Anderson, oh, and the ball, it's, he, he shanks it off the side of his foot. Doesn't go very far. And the Trojans let it bounce, surrounded by the Wolves, and they're going to down it at the 30-yard line. So the Wolves turn it over here. That's a good series of handoffs and a good series of runs right there by South Kitsap, but, uh, you know, the uh, third string guys come in there and they mess it up a little bit, you know, get kind of nervous. You can't blame him for being nervous. He's only a sophomore, but uh, it's not good to see that, but uh, hopefully he'll get another shot at it. So more substitutions coming into the game now for the Wolves and uh, more subs coming in also for the Olympic Trojans here. As both sides are getting some playing time here for their younger fellas. South Kitsap still leading Olympic 48 to 14 with just under six minutes to go in the game. Jeff Shaw in at quarterback, sends a man in motion. They hand the ball off and a double reverse, a double reverse to number one.
And he's not even on the he's not even on the the roster here for Olympic. Sure looked like number one. Couldn't quite see it. And if it was, he's not on the roster. So anyways, a nice gain there by the Trojans. And it's going to be first and ten for Olympic at their own 43. Shaw with the handoff straight up the middle to Switzer. He barrels his way forward, gets a couple on the play. And uh, I've seen that play more than once here for um, ran by the Olympic and uh, so has South Kitsap. They've really put the stop to that play. Let's see something different here by Olympic. I think that Olympic might come out throwing a little bit more here, but uh, that doesn't seem to be the case. And actually, there is a new quarterback in for Olympic. It's number 18, Cody Gap. And they hand the ball off to number 22 for Olympic. And Valle, again, with a good hit right there. And he doesn't get much on the play. So, uh, in fact, there's going to be a couple loss, a couple yards on the loss there. Ball will be placed at the 45. It'll be third and eight for Olympic. And with about four minutes and 30 seconds to go. So Olympic sends two receivers split wide, two backs in the backfield. Shaw back in, the lefty, and he, oh, it's, it's incomplete. The pass was intended for Lambert. He caught it at the 45, but the ball slipped out of his hands, incomplete. It's gonna be fourth and eight for Olympic. I think Valle had a little bit to do with the ball. <laughs> Slipping out of his hands that time as he wraps his big arms around that guy and the ball pops out. Shaw with the nice pass to Lambert, but he couldn't hold on to it. He has a good pass play. That's a good route there. So the Trojans will go for it here on fourth down. Shaw drops back. He's got a man open. He looks for him. Throws into heavy coverage. It's tipped, but it's incomplete. And out come the yellow flags, and that's going to be pass interference on South Kitsap. Shaw dropped back, looked for his man in the zone, and uh, there are about five wolves in the area. Tipped around, but uh, a defender got to him, and it's going to be pass interference on South Kitsap. So going from fourth down, defensive holding is the call. So that's going to be an automatic first down for Olympic. Wait a minute, what are we doing here? Looked like they were almost going backwards. There they go, now they're getting it straight here. The officials getting the ball there. Have to mark it off properly. Pass interference on South Kitsap. So Olympic will have a first down at the South Kitsap 40 yard line. So the Trojans on the move here as Martin Gratz splits left. Dual quarterbacks now taking over here for the offensive series as Cody Gap hands the ball off to Switzer, but he doesn't go very far. Taken down by 56, Kenny Gatlin. The Trojans in the wing tee. Shaw back at quarterback, handing the ball off. Not much there again. Maybe getting back to the 40-yard line. It'll be third down for Olympic. So it's about three minutes and 30 seconds to go in this game. South Kitsap leads 48 to 14. So the Trojans sticking with the running game here. As Martin Gratz splits right. Gap back in at quarterback. They hand the ball off to number 42, Clyde Switzer. He gets a couple on the play. Across the 40 to about the 43. It'll be fourth and six for the Trojans. So the Trojans break the huddle quickly. Gap hands the ball off to number 22, and he's hit from behind. 
Nice job there on defense by Dusty Starkweather. And Devin Spencer also looked like number 68 was in there, but I don't have a number there for 68 on South Kitsap. So a lot of guys getting playing time here and it's a failed fourth down conversion. So Olympic will turn the ball over on downs to the Wolves. And uh, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe uh, Olympic's trying to do what South Kitsap wants 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 them to do is uh, just kind of keep the clock going a little bit and running the ball. I didn't see, I expected them just to you know come out in the shotgun and really try and score a touchdown, and make them feel good about themselves. But they they try and uh, they try and run the ball and uh, switching their quarterbacks every play. It's a little bit different right there. Well, I think the, wolf, the Wolves have taken a time out here and are probably looking to uh, have a little sideline talk here from head coach DJ Sigurdsson. He's probably telling his guys, hey, look, we've got a 48-14 lead. There's 2.42 remaining. Let's play hard, let's play smart, and let's play together. They want to control the ball here with no turnovers, but I think that they're just really looking to run this ball and keep the clock running. So they're all getting fired up here on the sidelines for the Wolves as the Olympic training staff comes out to tend to the Trojans and the Wolves break the huddle and they will be ready to go here. As Jared Stevenson is back in at quarterback, Nickerson is at the tailback position Oh, there's a fumble on the play, and they're going to pick it up, and Olympic is going to score a touchdown here. Just like that. Number 38, Luke Switzer, picks up the fumbled ball by Stevenson. Stevenson showed us a lot before coming in for Vetters, really getting the job done, but, Steve, but comes in and fumbles the ball. Switzer runs it in for a touchdown. Well, I think I jinxed South Kitsap there about what they, the game plan, what they wanted to do. And just like that, Stevenson looked like he was uh, holding the ball back there, had fumbled it, and uh, the ball was loose. And Switzer picked it up and ran it in for the touchdown. So just like that, the Trojans get on the board here, and uh, they are going to take a timeout. So you can bet that that's one thing that Coach Sigurdsson just does not want to see happen right now. So the Wolves come to the sideline here and they are being talked to by one of the uh, assistant coaches, Jim Fairweather. And I'm not gonna tell you what I think he's saying because I, I don't wanna jinx these guys any further than what I just did on that last play. That's a good plan there, TV. So the Wolves are sprinting out on defense here. Olympic hoping to get that ball into the end zone for the two-point conversion. Cody Gap in. They hand the ball off to number 22. He's going to get in. No, actually, that's number 36. That's Robert Hodge. And that's a good block right there by number uh, 74, Colin Stump. He wouldn't have got in there if that hole hadn't been created by number 74, Stump. So just like that, the Trojans get a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And this looks like an actual game here at uh, 48 and 22. We know it's not, but uh, and a few key South Kitsap mistakes. Olympic capitalizes and takes it in for the touchdown and goes for two. And the score now 48 to 22 with 232 remaining. Well, there's not much time left here on the clock, but the one thing that the Wolves want to do is they want to make sure and protect that football. A couple of turnovers here have resulted in Olympic touchdowns. So uh, they've got to hang on to this football. And, uh, you know, Olympic's got to be fired up a little bit here, you know, knowing that they're getting them a little bit of momentum. They're still quite a, quite a bit out of range here, down by 26 points, going to need at least three, at least four scores. But, uh, you know, hey, you don't want, you just don't want this to turn into a sloppy contest. So the Wolves send back Valle and Anderson. They creep up forward a little bit here as the 
Trojans might look to go for another onside kick. So the shift is on, they shift to the left side. There's the kick by Wisdom, and they are, they're going for it, but no, nice job by South Kitsap. Oh gosh, that's a late hit right there. Just trampled over whoever that was. Well, he caught the ball early, and there was still some hitting going on afterwards, but uh, South Kitsap handled themselves nicely there, showing a lot of class, knowing that Olympics just trying to play as hard as they can. Fielded there by number 23, Jeremiah Martin. And the Wolves will have a first down near midfield. Call it the 48. So Stevenson bowed at, back out at quarterback. Lorenzo Bryant is the tailback. They hand the ball off to Bryant. Gets a nice little hole there, but doesn't get much on the play. He might have a couple on the play, getting to right at midfield. It'll be second and eight for South Kitsap. As the time is winding down here now at Joe Knoll Stadium, the Wolves comfortably leading 48 to 22. Stevenson looking over at the sidelines, and Coach Segerson waiting for the signal, trying to utilize as much of that clock as he can. Bryant gets the handoff, bounces. There's another fumble on the play. But the Wolves get it back. They did get it back. So the Wolves having a little difficulty hanging onto the ball here in the second half with a lot of the reserves that are coming in. But they do get the ball back. Actually, they got a gain of about one on the play. It's going to be third and seven for South Kitsap. That's good that we got it back, but that, that's terrible that we fumbled it. We, we saw a lot, a lot of good right there from uh, Lorenzo, but it's not good that he fumbled it, and it's not good that uh, Tommy Patrick comes in and fumbles the ball, and uh, Stevenson loses the ball, and uh, it's a little bit of sloppy play here by South Kitsap. Starkweather comes into the game. Oh my gosh, is he hit quickly. Geez, Stevenson didn't even have a chance to get that ball off before the defender came in. That looked like number 82, Sean Guerrero. And he was taken down quickly. So a loss on the play. It'll be third and 12 for South Kitsap. Nice play there by Sean Guerrero. Actually, we'll call that fourth down. Boy, Stevenson had that had the snap and Guerrero got in there almost before he got the snap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there was some kind of hole right there for him to go through. So the Wolves looking to punt the ball away. There's a flag down and that usually means that there's too much time on, taken off the clock. Delay of game against South Kitsap, so they'll back him up five yards. As Nick Anderson gets ready to do the punting here for the Wolves. Chris Hunt back to receive the punt. Anderson with the kick, a nice punt, sails way over Hunt's head, and that's going to rumble into the end zone. So a nice kick by Nick Anderson. Doesn't check up though like he wished, and it rolls into the end zone for a touchback where the Trojans will take over at their own 20 yard line, but there's only five seconds remaining here in the game. And I would imagine that the Trojans are going to just take a knee here to end this contest. I wouldn't doubt it. They play very conservative, even with uh, with the slightest chance to get the lead, and or not get the lead, but uh, show that they can be competitive and, and try and get a touchdown. But uh, I highly, uh, highly doubt it. They're gonna sky one high. So this most likely will be the last play. They, won, they run one final running play here, and uh, that will do it here at Joe Knoll Stadium as the South Kitsap Wolves have defeated the Trojans from Olympic High School 48 to 22. The South Kitsap Wolves improved to four and one overall and a three and one record in the Narrows League, while the Trojans fall to two and three
and one in three in the Narrows League. We would like to thank you for joining us tonight here at the high school at Joe Knowles Stadium. And we would also like to thank the students of the video production program here at South who have, been made, who have made this television program possible. We would also like to thank the director, Mr. Mike Downham, for putting on such a great show. And here tonight at, the, at South Kitsap High School, as there, we had a new track and scoreboard inducted into this area, the South Kitsap Wolves do a nice job of winning a game 48 to 22 over the Wolves. Again, the final score, 48-22 South Kitsap over Olympic. I'm Darren Bowden. I'd like to thank Bill Wilson for joining me here in the booth tonight. And next week, uh, we'll see you guys again. Or no, actually, we won't be back here for another couple of weeks. So that's gonna do it here from Joe Knowles Stadium as the players finish shaking hands in the middle of the field and uh, the Wolves come away with a victory. So we'd like to thank you again for joining us tonight and uh, we'll see you guys soon. See you so soon. long, everybody.